We are currently focused on the resurrected body of Christ. Why is this important? What was the nature of the resurrection body of Christ post-resurrection pre-ascension? Well, Paul says Christ was the first to be raised from the dead. Since Jesus was not the first person to be raised from physical death, then something else is at work here. And so, we are told, to avoid this conundrum, we are told that what Paul meant when he said he was the first fruit from the dead, first to be raised from the dead, is that he was the very first person to be raised in an immortal, incorruptible body. Now, folks, listen to me very carefully. If Jesus' post-resurrection, pre-ascension body of Christ was not a transformed, immortal, incorruptible body, I said it in the last video, I will say it again, then all futurist interpretations of a future physical resurrection are completely falsified. Now, keep in mind in a previous video that I went through the text of 1 Corinthians 15, 19 and following, where Paul presents Christ as the first, first, then the first fruit, those who are Christ that is coming, then comes the end. That is a chronological sequence. It is not the rank or glory. It is sequence, sequence temporal sequence. <clears throat> that demands that Jesus was the very first. So if you make physical death in any sense to be the death that Paul is talking about when he's focused on the death of Christ, him being the first fruit. If you, if you say, yeah, 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 that's got to be physical death, then you completely destroy Paul's reference to the first fruit. You know, attempts are being made in, in so-called responses to my videos and to my positions, trying to prove that Adam and Eve did die physically somehow. Well, okay, they didn't, they didn't die physically that day, but an animal did. But that's not Adam and Eve dying. And then it's claimed, well, you know, Preston admits, and he talks out of both sides of his mouth because God originally said you're going to die physically. Well, they didn't die physically, so Preston's talking out of both sides of his mouth. I've never said that God threatened Adam and Eve with physical death. I, I have argued and do argue that if it is the case that, that God was threatening Adam and Eve with physical death, then since they did not die physical death that very day, then God lied. That is irrefutably true. It is simply sophistry to say, oh, well, Preston Preston admits that physical death was part of the threat. No, I've never said that. I've never admitted that. I have said if physical death was part of the threat. So it's completely improper. It is a total misrepresentation of my position to say Preston admits that God threatened them with physical death because I've never said that. Now, based upon this concept, you see, that physical death has got to be part of the threat that God made to Adam and Eve, People then extrapolate to the resurrection of Jesus. And they say that the physical resurrection of Jesus has to be of an immortal, incorruptible body. Now, that raises all sorts of questions, you know, uh, again, related to the death of Adam and the life of Adam. But I'm not going to get into that. Here's what I want you to see. Once again, if you make physical death to be the focus, even in a secondary sense, if physical death is included in the death of Adam, since Paul is focused on Jesus' resurrection being the first fruit, the first to be raised out of the death of Adam, then in some sense, Christ has to be the first to be raised from physical death. But he wasn't. Since Jesus was not raised from physical death first, 
that falsifies any idea of physical death being included in the death of Adam. I'm sorry, folks. That's just the way logic works. Now, very quickly, let me demonstrate that to you. It is argued, well, Jesus had to have been raised in an immortal, incorruptible body because, after all, he appeared in a different form. The disciples didn't recognize him. He appeared in a different form. The argument is being made here that since the disciples did not recognize Jesus, he must have been in a radically different form, i.e. in a transformed, immortal body. Oh, well, wait a minute. This argument, therefore, is going, it's essentially saying Jesus in a different form is not Jesus. Well, okay, then the, since the Bible says after he was resurrected, he was in a different form, Mark chapter 16, let me read that to you, right? okay? Now watch this, Mark 16, 9. When he arose, he arose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. And when they had heard him, he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After that, now watch this, he appeared in another form. From the Greek word epiphania. And it's, the Greek is in hemera. In Hemera Morphe, in a different form. Okay, so in verse 9, you have Jesus. Verse 12, you have Jesus in a different body, in a different form. So if the argument is valid that Jesus in a different form is not the same Jesus, then we have two Jesuses right here. Oh, and by the way, what about the transfiguration? Here is Jesus prior to his resurrection. And he was transformed into something the disciples just could not believe. You see, folks, when we start arguing, well, Jesus in a different form is not the same Jesus, we're simply missing the story of the Bible. We're missing the story, and we're reading into the resurrection of Jesus that is simply not there. In Mark chapter 16, we have Jesus in two forms. You therefore cannot argue, oh well, Jesus when he came out of the tomb was immortal, uh, incorruptible. Well, then what was his form in verse 12? When he was in a different form. Doesn't work. It simply doesn't work. And again, I would remind you, the transfiguration is an incredibly powerful uh, illustration. Here is Jesus transformed. What is transformed? It's the Greek word metamorphosis, changed in form. You remember the little ugly little cocoon goes into, uh, or the little worm goes into a cocoon, comes out a butterfly, different form. Is it the same? Yes. No. No. Yes. The attempts to make Jesus' resurrected body an immortal, incorruptible, transformed body simply fail to deal with the evidence. Oh, we are told, but the disciples did not recognize him after his resurrection. That demands that he had a different body. We'll address that on the flip side.